the unsufficient one. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, hey, that's who you are. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, the unsufficient one. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, hey, that's who you are. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, you provide. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, that's who, that's who you are. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, you provide for me. Whoa, 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 Master of everything, I don't know. I don't The master of everything. Whoa, 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 Is 
his name. So want you launch into the deep, launch into the deep, right where you are, not in special places. Want you launch into the deep, I'm sending you. Go out and launch into the deep, launch into the deep. Right where you are, not in special places. Would you launch into the deep? I'm sending you, and I'll be with you. And I'll be with you. Here's what we say: Cast out your nets into the deep places. The larger the net, the larger the catch. Cast out your nets into the deep places. The larger the net, the larger the cast. So what you launch? Launch into the deep, right where you are. Not in special places. Want you launch into the deep? I'm sending you. Let's go out and launch into the deep. Launch into the deep, right where you are. Not in special places. Want to launch? Want to launch into the deep? I'm sending you. Launch into the deep. Let's launch into the deep. Launch into the deep, right where you are. Not in special places. Want to launch? To launch into the deep, I'm sending you. Let's launch into the deep. Launch into the deep, right where you are. Not in special places. Launch into the deep, I'm sending you. And I'll be with you. And I'll be with you. God is good. Jesus said he's sending us out. So he's sending out as salt and light. Let your salt be salty, not lose its taste. Let your light be light and let it not lose its light. I'm the salt of the earth. Clap your hands to Jesus. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm the salt of the earth. I carry the flavor of God. I seize on the earth. I'm the salt of the earth. Hey, hey, hey. Salt of the earth. I carry the flavor of God. I seize on the earth. I'm the sun. I'm the sun of the earth. I'm the sun of the earth. I carry the flavor of God. I see the salt of the earth. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm the sun. Salt of the earth. I'm the salt of the earth. I carry the flavor. I'm the city, city. I'm the city, city. I'm the city built on a high, like the east. I influence the world. I am rich. I am prosperous. I'm the city, city. I'm the city, city. I'm the city built on a high, like the east. I live in the world. I I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. Light of the world. I'm the light of the world. I shine the light of God. I'm 
the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. I shine the light of God. I'm the sea to sit. I'm the sea to sit. I'm the sea to beat on a high like the yeast. I influence the world. I am rich. I am prosperous. I'm the sea to sit. I'm the sea to sit. I'm the sea to beat on a high like the yeast. I influence the world. I am rich. Okay, we're just going to do a simple move, a two move, one and two. Then you go back this side. Uh -huh, let's go. One, two, 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 one. Jesus made us dominate. I live to dominate. Let's go. I live to dominate. To dominate. To dominate. To dominate. No divination against me. I am covered. I live to dominate. Say, I live to dominate. To dominate. There is no enchantment against me. No divination against me. I am covered. I'm highly favored. Let's sing that. God favors me. I'm highly favored. I'm highly favored. I'm highly favored. I'm highly favored in Jesus. Highly favored. Highly favored. I'm highly favored. I'm highly favored. I'm highly favored in Jesus. Now highly favored, highly favored, I'm highly favored, I'm highly favored, I'm highly favored, I'm highly favored in Jesus. One more time, I'm a highly favored, say, I'm highly favored. I'm highly favored, I'm highly favored, I'm highly favored in Jesus. Nay, I'm the salt, the salt of the earth. I'm the salt of the earth. Yeah, I'm the salt of the earth. I can't eat the flavor of God. I see, I'm the salt of the earth, I'm the salt of the earth, I'm the salt of the earth, hey, I'm the salt of the earth, I can't eat the flavor of God, I'm the sea to city, I'm the sea to city, I'm the sea to built on a high, like a reef, I live in the world, I am rich. I am prosperous. I'm the sea to city. I'm the sea to city. I'm the sea. We turn a high like the yeast. I live in the world. I am rich. I am prosperous. I am blessed. Give the Lord a mighty clap of praise. He's worthy indeed. I am the salt of the earth and the light of the world. A good reminder that we have a responsibility, all of us. This morning is the third day of the Divine Conference 2020 at St. Francis Church current, and we are privileged again to have His Grace, the Archbishop, with us. And um, without further ado, we want to pray and he will come and minister to us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to thank you 
We want to honor you. We want to glorify thy name. We thank you, Jehovah, because seasons and times are in your hands. This season you have given to us to refresh us, to strengthen us, to redirect us, even to revive us and restore us yet again. So unto your hands we release ourselves that you may speak to us. We commit our Archbishop unto your hands. Lord, as he speaks your word, may it come with clarity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please take your seats. Thank you very much, Venerable Joyce, and uh, all of us who have joined, uh, those who are present and those who are watching, wherever you are, I take this opportunity once again to welcome you to our Defined Conference uh, Bible Exposition this morning. I bring greetings from the Diocese of Krenyaga, where I was yesterday, and that's why I was not able to join in, uh, presiding over a graduation ceremony for St. Andrew's Kabare Theological College. We thank God for the opportunity he continues to give us on a daily basis and continue to watch over us as we uh, gather and uh, go about our daily businesses. I know we are speaking and we are holding a conference at a time. Uh, in the face of the world, we are uh, uh, affected so much and deeply by uh, COVID-19 pandemic and uh, uh, many uh, hopes are, are dashed and many opportunities uh, seems to be completely crushed uh, and many uh, people are in a state of despair and hopelessness but the Lord is still speaking to us even this morning saying all is well uh, all is well because he reigns all is well because he's with us and as we continue to explore the subject launching into the deep uh, where he promised to bless us and to renew us and to give us hope uh, and to provide uh, because uh, the background of our speaking is when the disciples were in despair and in total confusion because they had nothing and Jesus says launch into the deep because there is something. Jesus is still saying to us this morning launch into the deep because not just there is something, there is life, there are opportunities, there is hope even when we seem to be in that state of hopelessness. So we continue uh, in our theme, uh, the conference theme taken from Luke chapter 5, verse 4, launching into the deep. On that day, we said that the, la the launch into the deep, we must wholly commit ourselves to God. We also mentioned that we, uh, when we launch into the deep, we are ushered into a new space and uh, we drive and experience uh, new blessings and new opportunities into the deep. Uh, we will see a miracle into the deep and things that we did not expect happen into the deep. Today we will continue to build on what we shared on Thursday. However, we'll draw our lessons, key lessons, from the life and ministry of Paul, the Apostle. Though he started off as a persecutor of the church, when he encountered Christ, his life was changed, and he literally launched into the deep, and he walked with the Lord and did wonders, and he was one of the persons named, uh, or, or we can attest to, that after Christ, himself, he changed the Christian world. Paul, we all know how he converted into Christianity. He, his background was a Jew uh, from, uh, as he explained, uh, the lineage of Benjamin, a devoted uh, Pharisee uh, by denomination of the Jewish tradition, he even said he went through the culture. He was circumcised on the eighth day as the Jews were required to. He started, uh, studied the word of God and the prophets and the law. So he was uh, by excellence a scholar. 
and he says he studied under Gamaliel, one of the renowned teachers of the day. So he was saying he's a refined Jew, uh, one among the elite, one among the leaders. And uh, because of his background, he was very uh, indignated when Christianity seems to shatter what Judaism was talking about, especially when Jesus the Messiah announced that he's the son of God. That really uh, was blasphemous to the Pharisees and the Jews because he thought, how can a son whom we know his birth, his mother and father claim to be God? And that was blasphemous enough. He chose to be one of those uh, among the pious Jews who will give himself wholly to protect that which he believed in. And he will give himself wholeheartedly, fiercely and intensely to make sure that whatever threatens Judaism, he will fight it to the core and to the very end. And therefore he enlisted himself among the Sanhedrin and the council of the day that I want to be one among those who will persecute anybody who seem to bring another teaching other than the one we already know. And therefore he uh, began on a journey uh, of persecuting Christians. We all know he was there when Steph, uh, uh, Stephen was stoned to death. He supervised it. And after that, he obtained letters and permission to go uh, into Damascus where they have wind that the Christian family has uh, run there for, uh, as a hideout place. And he was going to exterminate them. He was going to kill them. He was going to murder them the way they murdered Stephen. But on the way to Damascus, uh, he encountered the Lord Jesus. He was struck by lightning and a, 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 a voice came so clearly, why are you persecuting me, Saul? Why, why, why me? And uh, we all know what happened. He went blind and the Lord told him, now go to the city you are going, not with the same mission you had, but go to a man called Ananias. He will do the first thing that you need to be done. He will open your eyes anew because you are blind now. And when your eyes are opened, you'll begin to see things differently. That was a moment of his launching into the deep, deeper relationship, deeper knowledge of who God is and Jesus. And he walked into this city. And uh, when he was asking Ananias' house, I can imagine how fearful the disciples were, knowing who Paul was. Probably because of his blindness is when they saw he's a bit helpless. But nevertheless, he found the house and he was prayed for and shekels came out of his eyes and he began to see. And the Bible says he went into the desert for a number of days to be renewed and refreshed so that he can come as a person different, but still the same Paul with courage and the piety. So Paul was very religious. His training under Gamaliel was the finest available. His inten intentions and efforts were sincere. He was a good Pharisee who knew the Bible and sincerely believed that Christians, mo Christian movement was dangerous to Judaism. Paul hated the Christian faith and persecuted Christians without mercy. Paul got permission, as I've already said, to go and exterminate them. But when God stopped him, in his hurried uh, track uh, on the way to Damascus, the personal encounter with Jesus was nothing that can uh, uh, be imagined. It was, it was a sin that can be beho a sin that no one can, can ever imagine it will happen. And therefore, Paul converted to Christianity. He still did not relent when he fully con was fully converted and fully gave himself to the Lord. He did not uh, completely undo who Paul is, but he now changed his course with the same intensity, the same piety, 
he became a, a defender of the gospel, a preacher of the gospel. So what happened to him? When he encountered Jesus, first and foremost, the following happened. Strength and accomplishment were located in him. One, he transformed, he was transformed by God from a persecutor of Christians to a preacher of the gospel. Two, he preached Christ throughout the Roman Empire on three missionary journeys, something no other apostle has done before him. Three, he wrote 13 letters to various churches, some of which he established, others he heard that there is an existence of a Christian community gathering, and he decided to write to them even before he met them, like the letter to the Romans. And uh, his 13 letters found their place as part of the New Testament as we have today. He was never afraid to face any issue head on and deal with it. He faced prison, he faced the Sanhedrin not once, and he stood before them and said, I better and I rather obey God than man. And we all know his sentiments. Even that man, Gamaliel, at one point it had to say, you know, when the disciples, Peter and the rest, were claiming uh, that Jesus is Lord and they were told not to preach in that name, Gamaliel once told them, the Sanhedrin, that let us leave them alone. If it is of God, it will be sustained. If it is of men, it will disperse. He gave an example of a, a man called Judas. He said he carried 400 men and he claimed to be a messiah and uh, he furnished with all of them because it was of men. So if this one is of God, we cannot fight it because no man can fight anything of God. So Paul was one who was really courageous enough to face and explain everything and say he will rather obey God than man. He was also sensitive to God's leading and despite his strong personality, he always had the time to break and lead and let God direct him. He also acknowledges weaknesses. He talks of that which has been disturbing him for many times. He looked at himself just as a vessel, but he also knew that his time was limited. He said, I'm running the race, and that race will come to an end. He knew his time uh, is a time of struggle. That's why he said, I'm pressing on. And I'm pressing on because life is not easy. Uh, and uh, forgetting what is past, I look forward to the crown. He knew he was in a struggle and nothing was going to be easy even after launching into the deep. So brothers, what we learn from those five uh, character portraits of Paul is that uh, launching into the deep is both an encounter which is a miraculous encounter, but a moment of strengthening and a moment of renewal, but also a moment that calls us into serious commitment and engagement as we launch into the deep. Launching into the deep is to give us a new experience, and the deep of the sea is the most dangerous place uh, of places. And getting into that place of vulnerability Feeling that you are alone and incapable is a good moment to release oneself before the Lord. That is what Paul found himself when he was struck and he found himself helpless, even without sight. But a new beginning was dawning in his life. So lessons from Paul's life continues. The good news is that forgiveness and eternal life are available to all people who are and are, who are a gift of God because God graciously has given us through Christ an opportunity for forgiveness and eternal life. So launching into the deep is an opportunity 
to get in touch with the giver of life and by his grace receive the same eternal life. So launching into the deep is not a launching into lostness. It's not a launching into a death trap or a path of death. It's a launching into a path of life and a path of new beginnings. The next lesson is obedience results from a relationship with God. But obedience will never create or earn uh, that relationship. So when we obey God, it is only as a result of a, a relationship. But the, the obedience itself does not earn us that relationship. What earn the relationship is the grace of God. God chose before we chose him. He chose us before we chose him. So this relationship is God-driven relationship. That's why even Paul had no idea that he will ever encounter Jesus. He was killing anybody who is proclaiming his name. But God chose to reach out to him despite his bad past, despite his uh, sinful life, despite his bloody hands. God still reached them out because the relationship is out of grace. And therefore, all what we need to do is to release ourselves when grace finds us because grace is after us. Grace is for all of us and is coming our way. Whichever direction we face, the grace of God is coming your way. Actually, this man was not struggling in any way to find the direction of God, he was going the opposite direction to persecute that which is godly and uh, chain that which is godly. But the Lord liberated him because God chose to reach out. Real freedom does not come until we no longer have to prove our freedom. You know, sometimes we labor trying to prove and justify whatever we do and try to blame other things or other people for what we are and what we are doing. So how much we prove ourselves? There is no amount of uh, lawyers you can uh, hire to prove your case that can give you freedom. Friends, those who are here and those who are watching us, real freedom doesn't come until we no longer have to prove it, until we surrender. What I mean is total freedom and real freedom come at the place of surrender, at the place where we accept we are guilty, at the place where we accept we are on the wrong side, and then freedom comes when we are liberated and our sins are forgiven. God does not waste our time. He will use our past and present so we may serve him with our future. What am I trying to say? Even if you have wasted your time, how much? The moment you turn to Jesus, that is the beginning. The moment you launch into the deep, it doesn't count how long you will live again. It doesn't count the number of days. Even if it is one single day, when you turn to Christ, what you'll produce will last. It will remain. So God is not a waste of time. When we are experienced enough, he will call us at the middle of our experiences, not just good experiences, but also bad experiences, and he turns us for good, and he can make our past and our present and uh, enable us to serve his fu uh, the future with him. Paul, as a good student of Gamaliel, as a, a good follower of Judaism, as one who gave himself as a persecutor and defender of their faith as they knew it then, all that time could still be counted as wasted. And that's what Paul even says in his words. I count all those but lost. But you know what? It is those experiences that God turned for his own purposes and found the courageous Paul to courageously carry his gospel to the ends of the world. To launch into the deep, like Apostle Paul, 
we must do the following. First, we must choose to forget the past. Philippians chapter 3, 4 to 7, and verse 13. The Apostle Paul had uh, attended past. He had been a, a persecutor of Christians. However, when he met Christ, he was transformed. He never allowed his past to, determ uh, to, de to detain him from serving God. What are we saying? When we encounter and launch into the deep with the Lord, we are completely transformed and completely changed and our past will never count anymore. Many of us allow the past to chain us and the past can be good times and also bad times. Good times can still chain us by creating what they call a nostalgic uh, experience that we are always yearning the coming back of the good old days. We want always to go back there and experience what we, what we experienced when we were young. It is what every older person begins to experience when you begin to yearn, I wish I am young. I knew what I was capable of doing when I was young. I knew what I was able to do when I was able to do things. And you know, you look forward to it as if it is coming tomorrow. And you can change yourself by speaking about your past successes without creating new successes. You can change yourself by talking about what you are able to do then without trying to do what you can do now and bring a change that is desperately needed currently and the now. We can also chain our, uh, ourselves with the past by allowing our minds to continue recalling the bad things we did and create a guiltiness and shame. And we continue to look at ourselves as failures and unable, un are unable to release ourselves to the new possibilities. If Paul were to find himself in this place, he will not have any courage to stand before any Christian because his past will always remind him, how did you kill Stephen? What did you do? The shame could not allow him to go and speak about Christ whom he persecuted people in his name. But did he choose to pass that route? He didn't. He chose to forget Forgetting does not mean erasing it completely from your memory. But if he chose not to be determined, his life not to be determined by what has already passed. So forget, uh, the word forget as used uh, in the context does not necessarily mean erasing from the mind. It means choosing not to, to be tied down to those past happenings whether good or bad. And you know the Bible is full of uh, calling us to change and not to dwell on the past. Isaiah 43 says, do not dwell on former things. Forget the former things. Look, I'm doing a new thing. Isaiah was saying, when you encounter the Lord, the former things will count no more. Your past experiences will not matter much because the Lord is doing a new thing. You better begin to experience the new thing. It is a call to a new experience, a call to a new uh, journey, a call to a new perspective of things, a call to a new perception so that the way you perceive the things is totally, completely changed. So Paul did not allow himself to uh, be tied by the past. The Apostle Paul chose to forget all his past glories and mistakes. Again, Paul in 2 Corinthians say, when you encounter the Lord, chapter 5 verse 17, he says, when you encounter the Lord, the former is gone. The new has come. It's like offloading everything that was former. It's like offloading everything that was uh, not no longer useful 
and the new has come and the new experience will emerge out of it. Secondly, choose to know Christ. When we launch into the deep, we must make these hard choices. We must now choose to know who Christ is in earnest. Launching into the deep is launching into deeper knowledge and understanding of him. I said uh, on that day, launching into the deep is getting into a deeper conversation with the Lord Jesus, a deeper conversation with the word of God, a deeper conversation to know him better and to understand who he is better. Paul did not know who Jesus was until that very encounter. And when he knew exactly it is the Lord Jesus speaking to him, things were never the same again. So Apostle Paul had a, to make a choice to abandon his human achievements and successes so as to gain Christ. And he says so. To launch into the deep, you must willfully choose to follow Christ and be committed to his ways. So it's not just a, a, a matter of knowing him. It is a matter of choosing to follow him. And choosing to follow him does not only mean to follow him literally the way the disciples did when Peter encountered him uh, when he launched into the deep and caught fish unexpectedly. He abandoned his catch and followed him literally. Following Jesus also means following his teachings, obeying his command, living according to his teaching and carrying on his mission and do what he has called us to do. To know Christ, we must study his word and be committed at the place of prayer. We cannot know Christ enough until we know him through his word and committed to prayer where we seek the Holy Spirit to interpret it for us, to expound it for us, to reveal it to us, to make us know it deeper. And that's why Jesus said, as he was uh, giving the disciples his hints of going back to the Father, I will not leave you like ovens. I will send you another helper, the counselor, the teacher who will lead you into all truth, the one who will expose and expound the scriptures to you, the one who will convict you of your sins, the one who will enable you to come to that place of surrender and say, yes, I have known it is you, Lord, all along. You know, sometimes when we look at our past, we may think we have begun with the Lord the day of our salvation. But friends, let me tell you, God's hand has been with you long before you knew him. And therefore, when we look back and locate that place uh, where God has begun with us, we come to realize it was way long before we knew him. And we can only discover this as we learn his word trust him and call upon his name in prayer and allow the Holy Spirit to saturate us and open our minds and give us the wisdom of his word that we can be able to say, yes, we have a deeper relationship with Jesus. So launching into the deep is launching into this great and glorious deeper relationship with the Lord and knowing Christ in person. Not the Christ told by anybody else, not the Christ I've read by a, by, from a uh, a, a book of uh, whoever has written it, the Christ I have known, not the Christ my parents have always talked about, not the Christ of my friends, not the Christ of my pastor who teaches me in the church, not the Christ of my evangelist, it is a Christ whom I am related to as a person. So knowing Christ is a personal encounter and when you know him as a person then you are launching into the deep and you have launched into the deep. Launching into the deep, let me also emphasize, it's not a one-day event. It's not a one-time experience. It's not that day of salvation. It is a daily walk with the Lord. And that's why when we interact with his word every day and pray and allow the Holy Spirit to enable us to launch into those deeper places, we go deeper and deeper and deeper. I like watching Not Your World uh, those programs of the natural world and the natural environment. And one of the places I like watching is exploration of the sea life. And you know, when those divers launch into the deep, deep sea, 
they go and see exciting things. They find holes with a lot of creatures and plants. They bring to us things that we'll never, we will never have had an opportunity to see. Why? Because somebody was courageous enough to launch deeper and deeper into the sea and discover what sea life provides. Sometimes it is dangerous. I see them sometimes walking uh, in between sharks. How they, are, they survive and they are not attacked, I don't know. Whether they put things in themselves that uh, repel uh, those uh, dangerous animals in the sea, I don't know. But someone has to be courageous enough to launch deeper and deeper into the sea for us to be able to see God's creation uh, in a, a aquatic life. So what are we saying? Our daily walk with Jesus, through prayer and the study of his word, we launch us into that deep and are able to explore the depth of what the mind of God is and what he expects from us. Yes, the Bible speaks of the mysteries of God, which no man and no mind can ever fathom or imagine or even come to an understanding, but at least to some glimpse, to some depth, we can get into when we launch into the deep prayerfully and reading his word. So, to launch into the deep, like Paul, we must again choose to press on towards the mark of our higher calling. Philippians 3.14 We must press on. Paul says, launching into the deep is not just finished the day I have known him. It becomes a daily journey, a daily struggle, a daily encounter, but a journey also will be faced with the limitations of human nature, will be faced with our limitations uh, of even understanding and the weaknesses of the flesh and the body. And if there is one thing that Paul became conscious in his Christian life, is the two tensions between the flesh, the flesh of the body, and the, uh, the yearningness of the spirit. And he said, right in me, Two tensions, two worlds are fighting. The world of darkness uh, that drives the human body and the pleasures and the world that Christ has introduced me to. This is the glorious place of God. So two tensions. And he said we are not fighting with flesh and blood. We are fighting with principalities, dominions and kingdoms that establish themselves in us, in our minds and in our hearts. And unless we struggle to press on knowing that that is our reality, we may not make it. What does Paul imagine? He begins to imagine that before him, there is a price set that he must take. A price is set. It reminds us, and he reminds us of the athletes. And those who people who compete for a record uh, or, or, or to break a record. And they have to train hard and train hard many days and many months and many and sometimes for that, so, some of us who are just lay and we watch that event we think this man who have been paid millions just won that race uh, if it is a hundred meters under under a minute and you say how how can you pay all these things when somebody just did it under a minute but we don't take uh, into cognizance the many hours and times of training and preparation we think he just woke up to, to win. This is exactly what Paul is saying. For you to win and get that crown, it must be a daily commitment, a daily sacrifice, a daily preparation, a daily walk with Jesus. So we must choose to press on. And pressing on here, draw our attention to not an easy journey. You must press the body beyond limitation. You press the mind, you press the heart, you press everything around you beyond their current limitations. And you press on, and you press on if you want to win. So Paul said that his goal was to know Christ, to be like Christ, and to be all Christ uh, had in mind for him. To be all that what Christ had in mind to him. This goal took all of Paul's energies his time, his moment. He even said, now I feel even my old age, I'm now being poured like a, like a liquid pouring and completely wasting away. But he said one thing I know, although I'm wasting outwardly, but inwardly I'm being renewed 
I'm being renewed and formed anew. It doesn't matter how I'm being wasted outwardly. It doesn't matter how they're, 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 they're tiring out, the tear and wire in my physical frame. It doesn't matter how many dead cells I'm dropping every day because of old age and struggles. All what I know is that the inner person is being renewed on a daily basis. This is a helpful example for us. Paul's life launching into the deep. Nothing else matters. He pressed on knowing that the crown is ahead of him. Launching into the deep is going with an understanding that there is something more glorious and greater laying ahead of us. If we are not pulled by that great thing ahead of us, then our journey will be wasteful and we will tire and retire. But friends, as we gather in this defined conference, the Lord is calling us to launch into the deep so that our relationship with him will become a daily, a daily encounter, not a one-off event, not a one-day struggle. It is a pressing on on a daily basis. And even if the body is wasting, even if we fall sick or you are in good health, even if old age catch up with us, we will be able to be there. Our calling as Christians is to serve God and experience eternal rest when our time on earth is done. No other calling, engagement, or even event, assignment is greater than this. So launching into the deep, as I conclude, is launching into the deep so that we must choose to forget the past and are not chained by the past and are not determined by the past and are not defined by the past but we release our past shame our past guilt put aside our past glories and successes so that we press on because the crowd the crown is far much more glorious than that past we must also choose to know Christ there will be no effort worth taking if it is only for the knowledge that Christ existed we must have a personal encounter with him Jesus must be mine and I must be his if I have to launch into the deep so that we can sing that song you are mine I am yours we must choose to press on towards the higher mark. We cannot grow in faith and progress to higher ground unless we choose to follow him. We must choose to follow him by getting that daily encounter with him. As I conclude, a small story to illustrate all what I've been saying. There was this guy, he was a filmmaker, his name was Walt Disney. And he was ruthless in cutting everything, anything that got in the way of a story pacing. What this uh, story is saying, this man is Dara. He will repeat his performance rehearsal again and again. And he will cut every piece that, that does not bring out what he has been yearning for. Ward Kimball, one of the animators, because he was trying to create uh, an animation show of what he called the white, uh, recalls that uh, this man worked 240 days just to produce a show which was going to last four and a half minutes. Can you imagine that? Spending, spending 240 days working on something that is going, only going to last four and a half minutes. What was he doing 240 days? He was rehearsing it, remaking it, remodeling it, cutting every piece that does not bring out what he wanted and make sure that uh, it is only the best which is going to come out of it. So in the end, this guy, Disney, um, produced his uh, play. It was thought and taken to be Zara uh, hilarious and funny. Why? 
because he decided to uh, make sure that his preparation was completely thorough. He made sure that uh, nothing which is not what he imagined come out of it. That is what, why he has to rehearse 240 days on something that is only going to last or to be watched four and a half minutes. Brothers and sisters, our walk with the Lord has to be Zara. That Zara. We have to be there time and again, reading his word time and again, praying time and again, learning to walk with him time and again. So that when that rapture day comes, you and I will be among the names which, be, which will be called as inheritors and heirs of the kingdom. I wish as we delve into the deep in this divine conference, his divine presence will be your daily experience. And as we engage in other aspects of life, let us remember our moment with the Lord cannot be matched by all other things that pretend to be busy and to make us ourselves busy. Because the one single thing that matter is where are we going to end? Where are we going to end? In his glorious kingdom or in some other place? And that's why Paul says, I press on so that after fighting the good fight, I will receive the crown of glory. Let this be your agenda. Let this be my agenda as we continue to serve him in earnest. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that, Lord, as we come to the conclusion of our Defined Conference 2020, you will have touched our hearts in an amazing way. You will have spoken to our spirits. You will have, oh, oh Lord, encountered with each one of us. You will have given us an opportunity through your grace that, Lord, you intercept us. The way you intercepted Paul when he was going astray and getting into a different direction from your direction. Lord, it's our prayer that you will intercept each one of us and bring us to that place of uh, humbly accepting your will. So God bless us as we continue to journey. And as Paul teaches us that we press on knowing that the price ahead is so much glorious. The price is eternal life. Nothing can match our destiny in eternity. So God bless each one of us and bless us as a diocese and as a people. Bless us as a ministry, as a witness, as the Anglican Church of Kenya. And as we bear witness to your word, O oh God, may we be impactful to our society and our nation. May we become a blessing to the nation Kenya and nations beyond us. May we become blessings to many lives and many communities who will be watching us and listening us, not only in this defined conference, but in all our ministries, in our dioceses, in our local churches, in our community experiences and engagement. May your name be glorified. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
yearning this morning this is our desire this morning we desire to have a deeper relationship with the Lord we desire to journey with the Lord but we also acknowledge that there are things that hinder us as we press on towards the mark of the high calling, there are other things that are pulling us down as we press on. And this morning, as we have been reminded, is a journey. And this journey, we can only make it if we release ourselves to journey with he who knows the way and he who is the way. I don't know where you are at, but I know if you are like me, you are struggling in one way or another. And today, this morning, whether you are at home, whether you are present here at St. Francis, it is our moment to release ourselves to God and say, Here I am, Lord. So if you desire that we stand with you together and pray this morning, just lift up your hand. His grace will pray. And I know without a shadow of doubt that we'll begin a new journey and the Lord will set us free as he continues with us. Our God is not looking for perfection and we have been reminded that he's looking for a willing heart forgetting the past. If you are here and you desire that the Lord will do a new thing in your life, just lift up your hand. His grace will stand and pray with us who need prayers. If you are at home, thank you for that hand. If you are at home, please also just be in a position of prayer the Lord is there with you and as he prays I'm sure and I know as Paul's life was transformed even our lives will be transformed your grace pray for all of us we need truly a new beginning into the deep thank you And you are in that place where you want this deeper relationship with the Lord and commit yourself to him and ask for forgiveness of your sins and yearn for that new beginning just say this simple prayer after me so that we pray together with you Lord Jesus today I have acknowledged you as my God and my Savior I have wandered away from your way, and Lord, you have found me. I come as I am, unworthy, needing you to cleanse me. So all that I have done that has not pleased you, forgive me. Let my names be removed from the book of death and be printed in the book of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior. Father, we thank you so much for all those who are putting their hands up, needing you in various aspects of their lives. Some need healing physically. Lord, our healer, heal them. Some have been in a state of confusion, not knowing where to find hope. 
and life has presented before them hopelessness, despair, and giving up. Lord, renew their journey, that Lord, in you there is hope, in you there is life, in you there is a future. Father, there are those who stand this morning who feel ashamed of themselves and are feeling guilty of their past actions and deeds, or even thoughts, or even the words they have said to their neighbors and to their family members. Lord, we pray, because you took away the shame of each one of us on the cross, and you took away our guilt, that you give them real freedom. And as they surrender to you, O oh God, this day, may they, they surrender earn a deeper relationship with you, and Lord, they become part of the kingdom, part of the body, which is your body. Lord, some of us are standing here because we have lost focus. We have been in this journey before, and we seem to have forgotten where the mark is, where the goal is, and we began to pursue other things other than pressing on towards the higher calling. Lord, we pray that you will reconnect us again. You will revive our spirits again. You will review, renew our vision again. That when things have become vague in our life, you will remove the fogginess and vagueness and make them clear so that, Lord, we can see clearly where we are headed. And because you said you are the way, Lord, put us in your way. We pray, O oh God, that you will strengthen those who need strengthening. You will pour afresh your Holy Spirit to reveal to us all truth and expose your word to us and expound it so that we have a deeper meaning and understanding of what you have called us into. Some of us, Lord, are drifting away from our commitment to serve you and other things are presented as urgent. Other things are presented as more important and we are pursuing other journeys other than your journey. Lord, we pray that you put us back to your path so that we may follow your way and walk the journey which is not our journey, but your journey with us. Lord, we pray as we bring this uh, conference today to a close, that the deeper relationship and the deeper, uh, uh, the deeper we have launched into you, O oh God, will be our daily experience. It will not be an event of this conference, it will be our daily event that our journey with you will be a glorious journey. This is our prayer, O oh God, in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Your, your grace, I'm thinking that uh, you give us the benediction after we remind that we, we are continuing with the program at four. Um, thank you for being here this morning. So please uh, let's meet back here at four o'clock. Uh, we have the two speakers and then we have the closing ceremony, Your Grace. And um, I believe this is a time to remember. So may God bless us as we continue. So finish Tom uh, with a song and then we'll get we'll receive benediction. This is a song we learned yesterday. Thanksgiving from the language of Itesu. Let's stand up. Very simple. Hey Alama, hey Alama, hey Joke Deke, we call Oyunga Twana. Hey Joke Deke, hey Alama, hey Alama, hey Joke Deke, we call Oyunga Twana. Hey Joke Deke, Alakara, Alakara, hey Joke Deke, we call Oyunga Twana. Alakara, alakara, di kolo yonga twana. E alama, e alama, e alama, e alama. 
shine his face upon each one of us and be gracious to us. May he bless us in the countryside, in the cities. May the Lord watch over each one of us and give us his light. And now Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon each one of us, light our ways, illuminate our hearts and our minds, and scatter every bit of darkness. And now the blessings of God, Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen.
Places the larger the net, the larger the.